I'm not the biggest plant guy in the world, but I can definitely appreciate the process that a plant goes through as it grows. Whether it turns into a beautiful mango tree, shout out to everybody in Florida, or whether it turns into a banana tree, or whether it's just a flower that grows into this just beautiful sight to see. But in order for a plant to grow to its fullest, it has to start somewhere. And the way it starts is with that first seed. And even though it's early, the ravens have just that, that first seed. And what we're hoping this thing grows into ends up being this beautiful, golden, Super Bowl plant that the ravens can all say, hey, we plowed this thing together. We grew this thing together and we really made this thing happen. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Top of the morning, 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 top of the morning. Now I know it's early. It's very early. We only heading into week seven. But after that game last night, where a lot of us were saying tighten up, just, just for last night, and I, I didn't have much confidence that they would do it. I had a little bit, and I know it's any given Sunday, but I still didn't have much confidence that they would do it. The Bills played the Titans, Monday Night Football, and on a goal line stand, I didn't have any problem with the play call. You play to win, um, and hey, you felt like you could get that first down. I mean, Lamar got it the other day on a QB sneak, but Josh Allen, he ain't get it. They made a real nice stop. And the Titans end up beating the Bills, uh, and that dropped the Bills to, what, 4-2? and two? And now the Ravens, all alone, by themselves. Now, you know that song, All By Myself? Like, usually when people sing that, it's sad, but not this, not this occasion. This is not sad at all. Right now, the Ravens are the number one seed. In the AFC. They're the number one team in the AFC. And that feels good. Now, again, I know it's early. Things could change. Things could change even this weekend. Uh, I hope they don't. But it feels good to be able to sit atop, sort of feel yourself a little bit, pop your collar a little bit, brush, brush your shoulders off and whatnot. It's good. But the Ravens have plenty of work to do. Now, um, with the Ravens sitting at 5-1 and one right now, who would have thought? Like, if you tell, if you told any Ravens fan, any realistic Ravens fan, because you, you know you got some Ravens fans that think, oh, man, oh, we're going to win every single game. Now, we know they got a chance to win every single game, but anyway. Um, if you would have told a realistic Ravens fan, hey, you guys uh, are going to lose... Ronnie Stanley. Uh, you know what? Let's start with the guys that are out for the year. You guys are going to lose Marcus Peters for the year. Gus Edwards for the year. Uh, J.K. Dobbins for the year. Uh, Justice Hill for the year. You're going to lose all those guys for the year. Um, and then Derek Wolf, he's going to be out for who knows how long. Nick Boyle's going to be out for who knows how long. Um, you guys are also going to lose uh, Ben Cleveland. Uh, for a little bit, you guys are going to lose Ty Phillips. Uh, you guys are going to lose Ronnie Stanley. Uh, you guys, uh, Rashad Bateman, he's going to be out for a little while. Um, and, and the list obviously goes on. If you would have told any realistic Ravens fan about all the players that they were going to lose, all the players that were going to be on injury reserve this year, and in the same sentence, you said, oh, but you guys are going to start 5-1. and one. You guys are going to start 5-1. and one. And possibly be 6-1 and one heading into the bye, which would be great. But you guys are going to start 5-1. and one. And the only loss that you guys are going to have is going to be in overtime. If you'd have told any realistic Ravens fan that, after all those injuries, they would have took it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. And they may not think that it's achievable, even though if you got number 8, then... You always got a shot. But still, they probably would have looked at you like, mm, oh, okay, I don't know about all that, but I'll take it. And we certainly will. Because you, you, you got to give credit where credit is due. Um, as much as 
I know I, I've I done had my gripes with him and my problems with him and 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 the way that he does certain things. Um, but right now, John Harbaugh and them, they they doing it. They doing it. My boy G Ro, you know, hey, that that Twitter profile picture ain't changing. It, it ain't changing. That's my guy. And you know, y'all know last year, I was saying, I was one of the people saying, hey, G Ro, I, I I think it's time that he goes. I just felt like the Ravens should have moved in a different direction uh, and just really started fresh, got some young, innovative coaches uh, that, that really uh, may not have much of an NFL resume as far as like offensive coordinators or whatnot, but Ravens give them a shot. And it's crazy that while they didn't fire Giro, they did hire some young guys who these two, you two brothers that – Ain't got much NFL. They ain't got no NFL tape at all as offensive coordinators, but they got experience working with NFL guys and the young, innovative guys that came on board and they made such a big difference. And they have helped this team a lot. And that's, of course, TT and Kiki. Y'all already know what's up. And I couldn't believe it. it was somebody in the comment section of the last video that said, who is TT and who's Kiki? I was like, what? Are you, you really don't know who that is? It's T. Martin and Keith Williams, by the way. And Wink, even though the, the defense has been up and down, um, and uh, LJ4 was another person on the list. Add him to that list that we talked about earlier. Even though that defense has been up and down, Wink has uh, he's had some really standout games. And, and even when you think about it, too, uh, with the defense, one of the, one of the biggest reasons I think that they have struggled is because of the offense slow starts. Offense slow starts. Like in the Colts game, the first half, the, uh, even though the Colts were just maneuvering this defense, they were moving all up and down the field on this defense. In the first half, Colts only scored 10 points. They scored 10 points. Now, if we could have got a first half like we got against the Chargers, against the Colts, oh, man, I don't think it would have been no stressful game like it was. But the, the, the slow starts, they don't help. It makes it tougher for the defense. And then you look at the Chiefs game. Those, the, the, those two interceptions that Lamar threw. Slow start. And, but anyway, um, with the Ravens sitting atop the AFC, um, does this make them the best team in the AFC? Now, I know there's going to be some people that say, oh, no, no, no. It's the Bills. It's those Buffalo Bills. And, and to each his own. Uh, but... This is nice because right now, the Ravens, they control their own. And I know it's, it's, it's so early to be saying that, that whole phrase. And you, I know with the Ravens, we're not used to hearing that phrase when it comes to the Ravens because a lot of times the Ravens, they need some outside help because that's, that's just the normal Ravens. Like, again, 2019, that was a dream season. I mean, it ended in a nightmare, but... The regular season, that was a dream. Like, for Ravens to have the number one seed locked up like they did, I was like, what? what is this? This ain't like, we ain't used to this kind of stuff. Not at all. We used to the wild card. Yeah, we might get a division or something, but we used to having a fight to get in. We ain't used to being able to chill the last couple of weeks of the season. Oh, we number one seed. Yeah, we number one seed. It's cool. You, you ain't got that. Oh, don't worry about it. It ain't for you. No. Like, it is, it was weird. So, again, however the rest of this season goes, it's early. It's early. But we're loving it. And you got to give kudos to the players. You got to give kudos to the coaches. Um, you got to give kudos. And, and then, too, y'all know I had my gripes with them, too, this offseason. Because, boy, oh, boy, I just really wanted them to really invest in wide receiver. Like a proven guy. I like Rashad Bateman. I wanted them to get Rashad Bateman too, but I really wanted a proven guy too. Another one on top of Sammy Watkins. But even though they um they halfway heard my cry, so they did get Rashad Bateman, which I was very happy about. Um, they they said nope. We are going to we got Sammy Watkins, and besides him, we rolling with what we got. That's it. Take it or leave it. And I was like, uh, okay, here's what it is. Let's see. And my fear was the, the same fear that it, it has been uh, for a while now is that, 
yeah, we have some receivers, but how are they going to be used? Are they going to be used to their strengths? Or are they going to be played to their strengths? It was a big problem that I had. Something that I was worried about heading into this season. But these Ravens have shown like, okay, no, nah, we, we, we got it. We got it. And again, TT and Kiki, man. And thank you to Harbaugh and Giro for allowing them to have a voice. Because you can tell that their voice is heard throughout the locker room with the players and in the co- with the coaches. You can tell that their voice is heard and their impact has been made. Now, um, on defense, something that somebody brought out. And I hadn't even thought about it. I think it was uh, Ravens fans, ni- Ravens fan ninety six on Twitter, I believe. Um, but he asked a question the other day when uh, we did the video on if if Patrick Queen would be benched, if the Ravens would bench Patrick Queen, because he he's been struggling. Uh, now he did do his thing in the uh, the Chargers game, but he was technically benched for Josh Bynes. He was out there a significant amount of time, but it was jo- it was the Josh Bynes show. Uh, but anyway, he asked the question, well, do you think that this could actually be a thing with coaches and with um, with making the change and having uh, Rob Ryan as a linebackers coach? Do you think this actually sort of may, maybe have messed up Patrick Queen a bit? It's like getting a new manager when a new manager takes over and they sort of change everything. Could that be it? And I, was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a really, really good question. Um, but hopefully Patrick Queen will, uh, moving forward, he'll be good to go. I think he should be here. He'll be, I mean, he got, he got speed. He, um, he, he got the, the smarts, the smarts are coming along more and more. Every game is more experience. And, and he, to me, he made a big jump smarts wise, uh, from last year to this year. Um, so it's, it's there. We just got to hone it in, man. But. Anyway, despite, and th- this is another thing that makes this whole, them being on top right now in the AFC so impressive, despite all the injuries, despite um, a lot of struggles that they've had, especially on defense, despite all of that, they still have 5-1. and one. And then another thing to think about, too, is that I don't know what the exact number was, but I know it was not good. It was not good. Like, they had some record for the Ravens. Uh, and, and games decided by like, what was it? Games decided decided by either one score. I think it's by one score. Games that are super close. The Ravens' record was not good overall, like throughout the years. I forgot what it was. If, if somebody knows the exact record, uh, please put it in the comment section. Well, at least the record before this season. But it was not good. But the Ravens are showing, and even in the Week One loss, the offense put them ahead. 32 seconds left, but the Ravens are showing that even in close games, they can close it out. Now, I wish, ooh, if they would have, oh, man, we could have been having this conversation uh, last week if the Ravens would have closed it out. But it's all good. Um, And what I mean, this conversation about being the number one team in the AFC, we could have been having this already uh, if they would have won in week one. That's what I meant. But week one, 32 seconds left. Lamar and them, they they got the go-ahead drive to put the Ravens on top. And all they had to do was stop the Raiders with 32 seconds left. Couldn't do it. The Chiefs, of course, the Adafi away. Boom. Punch out. Nice. Then the Lions game, that 66-yard field goal. Nice. Um, and it's, oh, boy. Broncos, it was stress-free, which was great. Thank you. Uh, but then the Colts. Colts, they're down 19. 19 points. They come back, win in overtime, nice. And then the Chargers, they they let us have a little break. So this team, I almost feel like this team, it almost feels like they're overachieving almost. Again, because of all the injuries. It's crazy. I saw something that, uh, I saw something yesterday on Twitter that talked about uh, the teams with the most people on injury reserve. I think it said Ravens had 16 on injury reserve. And the Lions had 15. The Ravens are 5-1. and one. The Lions are 0-5, I believe. Now, again, it is the Lions. But still, that, that shows you that despite everything, 
these Ravens are doing it. So let's hope that they continue to do it and let's hope they hold down this number one seed and, and take it with them all through the playoffs. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. We out.